All right, welcome back to Tommy's Chutes episode two. Today we're gonna cover the dumbbell row or a pulling type pattern or shape, right? Uh, it's something I see a lot of people do really badly and gyms are going back soon, so let's get our heads around how to do it, where to start if you've never done it before uh, and sort of why we would do it, right? Um, so what we need, we need a bench, a couch, uh, a, a coffee table, whatever you got at home. Uh, every gym's gonna have a, a, a ton of benches and stuff like that. So in the next few weeks, you'll have access to this. If you don't right now, that's fine. Second thing you're gonna need is some weight. Um, that can be a backpack with some water bottles, it can be a dumbbell, it can be some bands, any sort of resistance or load. Cool? So where we start, uh, if you haven't watched core bracing, it's up the top in my highlights, or there's a tile down below, go and watch that. If you don't know how to stabilize your spine, you're not quite ready for this, okay? Go do that, come back here. Cool? So we're gonna start, we're gonna put one knee, so the, 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 the closer side, so if I'm, the, the bench is on my left, so my left knee and my left hand go down, and then we're just gonna take that dumbbell up off the floor, right? We brace our core so I have a nice long flat spine, and then what I wanna let you, what I want you to do is keeping your, you're gonna bring your shoulders to about even, then I just want you to let your right hand, or your right shoulder come down towards the floor, and then up down and then pull back up, right? So if I show you from side on what I'm doing there without being sort of horizontal, I want you to take your, sh your arm out in front and then let gravity or the weight in your hand pull that shoulder down towards the floor. We're not twisting. We're just letting the tip of my shoulder sag towards the floor and then I'm pulling my shoulder blade. So I'm pulling in here down towards my opposite back pocket. So my right shoulder blade towards my left back pocket, I pull down and I pull that shoulder blade right back. Cool, so again, looks like sitting up in the middle, letting that come down and through and then pulling shoulder blade to back pocket and relax off and shoulder blade to back pocket. Okay, once you can do that, then we're gonna link the movement of our elbow and our hand to the movement of our shoulder. By pulling that shoulder blade down and back, we engage the big muscles of our back, and that's how we're gonna get the most bang for our buck. We're gonna get better development of our back, we're gonna actually recruit the big muscles of our back, and we're gonna move more weight, and that's a good thing. Cool, so shoulder blade to back pocket, then we can start. What we're thinking about doing is bringing our elbow to our midline, so elbow to rib cage, or even elbow to hip back here, not out to the side. So that arm stays nice and close to our body. Close in here, we don't want to let it corkscrew and come right out up here, okay? That's no good for your shoulder. So, we set up here. We let that, we start in the middle, we let that shoulder come through, right down. We pull shoulder blade back, elbow comes to our hip, we feel our lat come on, and we let that down and off, and then the shoulder comes back down and through. What I don't wanna see is this. Shoulder comes on, elbow comes up and comes really high, and then my shoulder here pitches forward, down, back off, okay? If that shoulder, when we pull our elbow too far back past our hip or our ribs, if that shoulder pitches forward, we're in trouble. That's gonna fire up through the front of your shoulder, it's gonna be uncomfortable, and you're gonna start using your bicep, and this is a back exercise, not an arm exercise. If you wanna engage your biceps, go do curls, do some chin-ups. There are better ways to get some arm engagement, right? So, key things to think about with our row. It's a back exercise. Shoulder blades must come back and down. We pull our elbow towards our hip or towards our rib cage. We wanna think of our hand as more like a hook that's holding the weight and the elbow is doing most of the work. Of course, we pull up, to our midline and then we let the elbow come back down and then we let the shoulder blade come off, okay? That's how we learn the basic pulling pattern. Once you're a little bit more competent and you understand how to dissociate or how to get your shoulder to move separately to your elbow, that's fine. Then we can string those bits of the movement together. So what you'll see in the gym when you're watching people who've done a lot more rowing or pulling movements is they do this. They set up, and they just from the ground, they'll pull shoulder blade through, elbow through, elbow off, shoulder blade off. A little slower, shoulder blade, elbow, elbow back down, shoulder blade down, cool. So that'll look like that at real speed. 
Okay, that's what we're aiming for. So key things, or well, some more things I need you to think about with this. That weight that you're rowing, it must be a weight that you can retract or pull that shoulder blade down with. If you've been rowing badly and you've been rowing heavy, if the gym's reopened and you jump back into rowing too much weight, you're not gonna be able to get your shoulder blade to engage and pull down and back, right? So drop the load by 20, 30%. See if you can retract or see if you can get that shoulder and the muscles of your mid back to do the work before your elbow comes into it. And then let me know how you go. We want a lot more back than bicep, okay? So give that a crack. 